Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. Joshua chapter 15. And now in these next chapters, I'm actually going to speed it up next video, but uh, just letting you, I'm going to introduce it um, in these. This uh, 15 through 19 um, is a really quick read. It's actually not literally a quick read um, because of all the names and all the positions and all the uh, places that they're going to, but it is about the allotment of land to the tribes of Jacob, Israel. And so we have uh, all the tribes of Israel coming up out of Egypt, wandering the desert, now being able to actually reside in the promised land. And their promises become fulfilled in the fact that they get land, except for the Levites, uh, but being able to know that within their land. And now we have chapter 15, the allotment for Judah. Now, why would Judah be first? The first fruits of the land towards Judah. I'm going to throw up a map next video so we can just kind of walk in these instead of walking in all these names except for chapter 15 is great to be able to kind of introduce uh, but in these next chapters a map is crucial um, to so if you have a map in your Bible um, or if you have uh, Google <laughs> you can map in the allotments of the land of Israel we're going to be walking through that in these next videos here but why Judah. Now, so we have the faithfulness to Caleb in chapter 14, the division of land of east and west didn't get too detailed in chapter 14, but in chapter 15, we're very detailed. And it's for Judah. I just want to put that forth to you of being able to understand why Judah, what came from Judah, why is his tribe first, even though he is the fourth born. You'll hear about Reuben, you'll hear about Simeon, you'll hear about all these guys before Judah later on. But Judah is the line of the promise. Judah is in the line and actually the allotment that was talked about in Genesis chapter 49 by Jacob when he blessed Judah. Judah is that blessing, that promise because the lineage of Christ, of Jesus, is coming from the allotment and from the people of Judah. First fruits first allotment. I think God is in the details and God is always actually pushing us forward to be able to see the importance, yes, of the Old Testament, of the tribes, of the allotment, of the covenant through and promises through Judah towards Jesus. And so the allotment for Judah, a lot of names, a lot of places, but if you can uh, kind of envision, or if you do have a map, I'm going to show you in uh, next video, but if you do have a map, you can turn to that. You can see a very big region down south, south and southwest, that we can see Judah having a very large allotment um, from the Dead Sea over the Mediterranean down to Egypt. And so if you can capture that in your mind, you can capture some of these names as we walk forth in chapter 15. Let's read together. The allotment for the tribe of Judah, clan by clan, extended down to the territory of Edom, to the desert of Zin, to the extreme south, all the way to Egypt, as it says there. Their southern border started from that from the bay at the southern end of the Salt Sea, Dead Sea, crossed south of Scorpion Pass, continued on to Zin, and went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it ran past Hezron up to Adar and curved around to uh, Karka. It then passed along to Asmon and joined the Wadi of Egypt, ending at the sea. This is their southern boundary, all the way from the Dead Sea to the Mediterranean. The eastern boundary is the Salt Sea, as far as the mouth of the Jordan, where the Jordan actually runs into the Dead Sea there. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan. So from south to north Dead Sea, that is their eastern boundary, and their north is going to go over from the top of the Dead Sea over to the Mediterranean. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hagla, and uh, continued north of Beth Arba to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. The boundary then went up to Debir from the valley of Echar, and turned north to Gilgal, which faces the pass of Adamim, the south of the gorge. It continued along to the waters of En Shemesh and came out at En Rogel. Then it ran up to the valley of Ben Hinnom along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, that is Jerusalem. From there it climbed to the top of the hill west of the Hinnom Valley at the 
northern end of the Valley of Rephim. From the hilltop, the boundary headed toward the spring of the waters of Neftoa, came out of the towns of Mount Ephron, and went down towards Bala, that is, Kiriath Jerim. Then it curved westward from Bala to Mount Seir, ran along the northern, tri- the northern slope of Mount uh, J- Jerim, that is, Keselam, Kes- Keselam, continued down to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It went to the northern slope of Ekron, toward, uh, turned toward Shekaron, passed along to Mount Bala, and reached Jamnil. The boundary ended at the sea. The western boundary is the coastline of the Great Sea, that is, the Mediterranean. These are the boundaries around the people of Judah by their clans. In accordance with the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion in Judah, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the forefather of Anak. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Sheshai, Ahaman, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. From there he marched against the people living in Debir, formerly called Kiriath Sephir. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter, Aksa, in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sephir. Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter, Aksa, to him in marriage. One day when she came to Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What can I do for you? She replied, Do me a special favor. Since you have given me land of the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of Judah clan by clan. Southernmost towns of the tribe of Judah and the Negev toward the boundary of Edom were Kabzil, Adir, Jagur, Kena, Dimana. I mean, you can read these through if you want to hear Pastor Steve read all of these names. It's, that's great, um, but all of these allotments, right? Uh, the inheritance of the tribe, Judah, clan by clan. It's talking about cities. It's talking about areas um, in the... Uh, <clears throat> southernmost towns uh, in the western foothills uh, into verse 48 in the hill country and then 61 in the desert. Yet, verse 63, it says, Judah could not dislodge the Jebusites who were living in Jerusalem. To this day, the Jebusites live there with the people of Judah. And so as he has all of these allotments, all these conquerors, uh, Jerusalem is still inhabited with the Jebusites, with Judah. And we'll be able to pick that up a little bit later if we go into Judges. You can go into Judges chapter 1 and see uh, the fighting there or being able to see uh, trying to take over there. But that's not in the allotment for Judah in Jerusalem. Why all these names? Why all these allotments? It's just the detail, once again, of the land. The promise that is fulfilled. Uh, God is detailed, but Judah is promised, and Judah is residing. And Judah is going to be that promise, and that residing, and that allotment into years to come. Into the history and the fulfillment of Judah and David and Jesus. And so here we see the first allotment. Here we see the first fruits of, res, uh, of residing in the promised land. And it comes for Judah, by God, through Genesis 49, and now fulfilled, Joshua chapter 15. Lots of names, lots of allotments, but again, we can peel all this back and being able to say it is about God's promise and God's fulfillment and God's presence with his people in the promised land. Brothers and sisters, we can hear that, and I pray joyfully can hear that this day, that God promises, that God fulfills, and that God is present with us always. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.